Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Dr. Satyajit Rath and we are going to discuss what we've been threatening for quite some time. How do we look at the vaccines, the prospects of being able to roll out vaccines much faster than we have been doing hitherto and also looking at vaccine apartheid and Mr. Bill Gates' statement recently that unless the West, we, and he uses the word we in a very evocative sense, you know, uh, basically the white savior whiff comes from that statement. We transfer technology and give them money. How they, can they do anything? This, this is in fact said about Indian factories. So it's not it's something which is really about just generic third world, but really about Indian factories, particularly because the world has looked upon India till date as the global pharmacy for the poor. So that is the context within which this was being said. Satyajit, first let's look at quickly the issue that this though not an immediate urgent issue like say uh, trying to stop the transmission links, trying to reduce the numbers and oxygen etc for the hospitals. Nevertheless, the vaccines are going to be extremely important. So can you tell us that what are the basic technologies and for countries like India and large parts of the world, which are the technologies which are at the moment more uh, appropriate, more suitable, more amenable to our public health system that we can think of? So um, let's get a couple of things, as you say, um, uh, said right away, Prabhi. The first point is, as you point out, that um, we need not to lose our focus on vaccination. And we need not to lose our focus on vaccination because it is vaccination that is going to reduce the intensity of the pandemic over the intermediate term. Just there's absolutely no question about that. Number one. Number two, in the same context, let me make a, um, an even stronger point about the need for intermediate term equitable global vaccination. And that point is not simply a point of human rights and justice. It's also a point of the medical science involved, the biomedical science involved. Because given that the SARS-CoV-2 virus of COVID-19 is spreading in communities across the world, if we do not cover pretty much all the world at pretty much the same time, give or take a few months at most, then we are going to be in a situation where there will be communities such as in the global north which will be hugely vaccinated and communities such as in the particularly poor global south who will not be vaccinated at all or very poorly vaccinated and the virus circulating in the unvaccinated communities is going to keep lapping against the shore of the protect, vaccine protected territory. And that in ecological terms is where true vaccine resistant virus variants will begin to emerge. That's the ecosystem where vaccine resistant variants will begin to emerge. Well, it is said that unless everybody is safe, nobody is safe. It's really and that. And what I pointed out is the background of that statement that you just quoted. And therefore, not simply from the point of view of equity and justice, but from the point of view of the medical biology involved, across the world, close to simultaneous global vaccination is advisable, if not essential. Let me so just that add background one, that one additional point. In. Yeah. Just let's add one little point Satish, to what you're saying, that apart from enlightened self-interest, which is what this is, also is, there is also the other calculations which have been done by the Global Chamber of Commerce, which said that unless the global south, the poor countries are also able to recover 
the global economy, including the rich countries' economy, is not going to recover. In fact, we're talking of trillion dollar, trillions of dollars of losses, both in the global north and the global south, the rich countries and the poor countries, unless we stop the pandemic worldwide. Let's go to the point that you brought up. What are the platform technologies that would be applicable? Clearly, the current state, even today, of the mRNA-based platform technologies that the NIH Moderna vaccine and the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine utilize still depend on ultra-cold uh, um, storage of minus 70, minus 80 degrees Celsius, and therefore are really unlikely to be applicable in the global south on a large scale. This does not mean that the elites of the global metropolitan urban south cannot use these vaccines. In fact, I would argue that the elites of the global ur metropolitan urban south can use these vaccines and therefore, to some extent at least, reduce the pressure on vaccination campaigns in the global south on other vaccines that are actually technically appropriate and usable for wide vac widespread vaccination campaigns. The adenoviral vaccine platforms as well as the protein vaccine platforms, the adenoviral vaccine platforms, I remind uh, uh, our, our listeners, such as the AstraZeneca vaccine, such as the Gamalia Institute vaccine, such as um, at least two of the Chinese origin vaccines, um, all of these, as well as the protein vaccine platforms, which again includes the Novavax uh, vaccine, which includes again some um, uh, Chinese vaccines, uh, some Indian vaccines that are uh, in, in development, and the DNA-based vaccines, such as the Zydus Cadilla vaccine, again, one of the Chinese uh, um, company vaccines. All of these depend to a much depend on a much um, more available cold storage, which is essentially a refrigeration cold storage, and therefore are applicable in the global south. So there's also the third vaccine, which is the oldest manufacturing uh, technology using eggs. In fact, uh, you could also use other uh, places to grow these vaccines, eggs being supposedly the most uh, used one for this kind of uh, proposals right now. But the Sinopharm, the Sinovac, the CoronaVac vaccine, India's co-vaccine are all essentially inactivated uh, virus. And that's the oldest technology. It cannot perhaps scale up that rapidly. And it also, as you had pointed out earlier, has live virus to be grown, so therefore needs better manufacturing practices. But this is something which has been used for nearly 100 years. So that's also available. And it can also be, it cannot be, it need not be scaled up at that level, but multiple centers, multiple facilities exist both in India and China, for example, uh, other countries as well. So that, that platform also exists. Oh, absolutely, it does. Um, I, in my head, I tend to treat it as a protein platform because essentially it's a, it's, it's a way of delivering proteins. But you're absolutely right. It, it does exist as a platform. It, it has strengths and limitations, as you point out. Uh, the strengths are that it's relatively easy for a biotech com competent manufacturing sector to adopt the technology. Um, the limitation is that, as you point out, it's growing the infectious virus. I should, I should make a comment that in terms of the scale up for manufacturing technology, the making the adenoviral vaccine uh, formulation and the inactivated vaccine formulation require equal levels of technology competence. So it's not as if the uh, growing the infectious virus is e easier to scale up than scaling up the adenovirus because for both, you know, the development process is different. The the uh, infectious virus is 
once you grow it, your vaccine design is essentially just inactivated and injected. Whereas for the adenovirus, you have to engineer the adenovirus and so on and so forth. But once you have the adenovirus and the original infectious SARS-CoV-2 virus, scaling up for manufacture is actually the same process because you're using cell lines in large bioreactors in which you are growing a virus, whether you're growing the adenovirus or the SARS-CoV-2. Satyajit, recently in this context, we had Mr. Bill Gates uh, mention that he doesn't think intellectual property is an issue and uh, what the need is really private parties in uh, other, other countries. And he mentioned Indian factories quite pejoratively said without us giving technology and money, they really can't do anything. Uh, this therefore intellectual property rights is not the issue. Our knowledge recipes, he called them, are the issue and there we have to do this. Otherwise they can't do it by themselves. Now, I, I would like really uh, your reaction to that because you know this area much better th than I do, particularly how the pharmaceutical sector developed in India, the fact that Indian vaccine manufacturers actually are the biggest in terms of quantity to, in, in, to the world, supplying it to the world. In terms of quantity, they're much larger. In terms of value, they're much lower because they're the uh, big companies like Pfizer and all make much more money out of it. So how do you look at Mr. Bill Gates' statement? What is the... No truth in that at one level i i tend to raise an eyebrow and say ah 21st century version of the white man's burden um but that said let me struggle to um encompass that point of view and that struggle to encompass that point of view is the following um the brazilian and visa has uh, pointed out um, documentary deficiencies with Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine manufacturing process. Um, this doesn't surprise either you or I, um, in the sense that as a soft regulatory regime, India uh, companies uh, tend to try to get away with as, as, as much as they can. This is not, however, and this is where I begin to then differ from Mr. Gates. This is not, however, a matter of failure of technology capacity. This is simply a private sector response to a perceived soft regulatory regime. This is precisely what the private sector in the global north does with their own regulatory regimes, attempt to get away with as much as they can. So the point that somehow the global South is technologically incompetent or unabsorptive is fundamentally in error because it is using as evidence this kind of stuff that is based on the capitalist uh, economy rather than anything to do with technological capacity. The fact is that he, he is calling his fellow capitalist in the global south names for doing in the global south what he does in the global north. I'm, I'm going to ask you this question and you have said this in our programs earlier as well that there are whole number of companies who can manufacture vaccines who do manufacture vaccines, if knowledge is shared with them, and I'm talking again, not patents, but knowledge is shared with them, they are quite capable of manufacturing COVID-19 vaccines and Indian biologic companies, other biologic companies can also do it. And that's the only way we can reach 14 billion doses that we need this year, if that is the target, that's the only way we can reach it. Do, don't you, uh, what, how do you see this play out? So, um, you know, rather than discuss Mr. Gates's personal life or even actually the Gates Foundation itself, what I would like to point out is that 
that point of view that he has recently articulated is precisely the point of view that the pharmaceutical companies have been arguing. It is in fact the point of view that the uh, US uh, legislature, both Congress and Senate, are currently grappling with. Jan Chakowski, one of the uh, US uh, uh, members of Congress, is uh, uh, putting together an appeal to the US president to uh, put the presidential administration's weight behind the India-South Africa proposal for uh, the waiver that, that you made reference to. And the opposition comes within the US Congress and Senate from pharma company uh, funded uh, legislators through their talking points. And their talking point has been the one that you alluded to, which is, you know, let's not touch patents because patents are not really the problem. It's the entire technological landscape that is the problem. And that, as Mr. Gates and the pharma company point out, is simply something that is not easily taught. And therefore, you know, just, just leave it to us to do it as best as we can. And that is a fundamental problem. It's a fundamental problem because all the licensure agreements, for example, between the COVID-19 vaccine designers of the global north and the vaccine scale manufacturers of the global south, such as in India, the um, uh, agreement with the Serum Institute of India, the agreement with Bharat Biotech, which has its own partnership agreements with uh, vaccine makers in the global north, with Biological E, with, you know, the, with Dr. Reddy's laboratories, all of these, easily a dozen vaccine manufacturers in India have no difficulties with putting together and learning and absorbing the vaccine technologies of the global north without any startup limitations. In fact, the Serum Institute itself has an ongoing arrangement with Novavax for a completely different technological platform altogether. So in all of this, I don't see the problem as being one of difficulty in teaching the companies of the global south how to do things. I see the real problem as being working out the commercial licensure arrangements. And it is that delay and that limitation that is serving as the major rate limiting factor. If that rate limiting factor was at least alleviated, if not eliminated, then we would have a much larger scale of manufacture with not simply companies in India, but companies in Malaysia, companies in South Africa, companies in Argentina, com companies in Brazil, companies in Mexico, at least one or maybe two companies in uh, West Africa. So in all of this- And in Bangladesh. In all of this, we are therefore looking at commercial considerations limiting the rate of expansion of manufacturing scale, not technological limitations. And that is the fundamental point that I think it's important to keep in mind. Satyajit, last closing point. We also see the start of a vaccine war because the way anything about the Gamalia vaccine or the Chinese vaccine, Cuban vaccine, of course, doesn't even figure in most of the uh, global media. Uh, this is a small country, completely uh, doesn't fit Mr. Bill Gates' theory that vaccine can only be developed by the white man, uh, if you will. And here is a vaccine development that has taken place in Cuba, which is actually not just an inactivated virus vaccine, but also looking at other va vaccine platforms. They have five vac such vaccines in the offing. So you have a whole bunch of possibilities there. But if you are trying to limit it only to Western manufacture, then of course you must also make make others appear unattractive. Therefore, continuous reference to poor Chinese vaccines with actually very dissimilar figures. We can discuss it another day. AstraZeneca uh, being presented as much better than, for instance, Gamalia. No such 
evidence seems to exist, but that's what is being pushed. All of it seems to be a continuation of the global market uh, issue rather than a medical issue or an epidemiology, epidemiological issue. Well, let me, let me say two things in response. One is clearly vaccine capacity with perceptions that are built, as I said earlier, on differences in regulatory regime uh, uh, perceptions rather than in technologies, efficacies, or anything else. But they are being used for the obvious purpose of geopolitical power games on the one hand. And I think that this is an extraordinarily callous response to a global pandemic. But going beyond that, it is the inevitable outcome of a fundamental choice that all countries of the world seem to have made, which is that public good in a pandemic is going to come out of the greed of the capitalist marketplace. And once you give in to that, the commercial jockeying for profit advantage which is really the other face of what you describe is an inevitability to the point that here in India, when we had a vaccine that was developed in the public sector by a quasi government organization, the Indian Council of Medical Research in its laboratories in the National Institute of Virology, we followed exactly what the National Institutes of Health with its mRNA vaccine did in the United States. It gave it with a public sector grant to be developed to a private company, Moderna. So did ICMR give it to Bharat Biotech through an exclusive licensing device for no conceivable rationale or reason except for the ideology of the patent protected marketplace. So long as we are walking that road, it is hard for me to see how we are going to square the circle of profit making from the opportunity of global need. This is all the time we have today. Thanks, Satyajit, for being with us and going over a rather difficult technological terrain of vaccines. This is all the time we have today. Do keep watching News Click and do visit our website.